Writer, producer, philanthropist, and the first Asian American actress to be able to succeed in the Western cinema. Oh. <laughs> Nancy, what's one word that would best describe you? Uh, I'm too complicated to have one word to best describe me. Uh, I love the word spiritual. I don't know. And by the way, uh, Anna Mae Wong was really, she was really uh, the first Asian American. They say I am. Yeah. But Anna Mae Wong was, I think, um, to describe myself. I'm so complicated. Spiritual. Spiritual. I, I, that's important to me. The spirit. Compared to Audrey Hepburn and called the Chinese Bardot, the Hong Kong-born Euro-Asian American actress Nancy Kuang played a major role in the acceptance of actors of Asian descent in the Western movie scene. Nancy, who wanted to be a ballerina, was spotted by a Hollywood producer, Ray Stark, in her hometown when she was about 20. Despite having no acting experience, the producer sent Nancy to Hollywood and gave her the starting role of a prostitute, Suzy Wong, in the East Meets West romance, The World of Suzy Wong, alongside William Holden, 55 years ago. You live in LA, like you're just telling me, and you're here to receive an award, a Lifetime Achievement Award. How does it feel? Well, um, we had the celebration, the MOCA um, event last night, mm -hmm. and um, it was for the Lifetime Achievement Award. Yeah. And I mean, Lifetime Achievement Award, maybe it, it makes me feel like it's um, the end of my life or something. <laughs> That's how I feel. <laughs> oh, my. In the 60s, you were considered a sex symbol, basically. You're praised for your beauty. How did it feel? How comfortable were you with that label back then? It wasn't a matter of comfort or not. It was, mm -hmm. um, I did my first film in the 60s, The World of Suzy Wong. Mm -hmm. And in the film, I play a prostitute. Yeah. And I don't know if she was sexy. I mean, maybe during that time, today it's very, very mild and innocent for a prostitute. And, but I happened to have a great leading man called William Hoven, who, and a wonderful director, Richard Quine, who actually uh, helped me, or introduced me to the film business, because I always wanted to be a ballet dancer prior to that. And so it really uh, helped start my career. And so, sex symbol, I don't know. I guess if they think she's, oh yeah, I wore these um, Chinese Cheng Sam. That's like uh, very tight dresses with a high slit. And maybe because of that and my long hair and the image. And so people say, oh, that's sexy. There was at a time when Asian Americans were barely even present in Western true, cinema. True. How do you think that that movie helped to open doors for other Asian Americans? I think it did actually. A lot of my friends worked after that. And in the 60s, uh, after that, I did. After Suzy Wong, I did another, that was a Broadway play as well, and I think that helped. It went from a book, a popular book, to, to a play, and then made it to a film. That's the Suzy Wong. And on that time, on Broadway, that was playing, and Flower Drum Song, the Rodgers and Hammerstein musical was playing. And that was made into a film, mm -hmm. a Flower Drum Song, by Universal. And it was the first time that the studio it was a mainstream film with an all-Asian cast, which never happened before. And I think that really opened the door for a lot of Asian actors. This is it, the brawling one Chai district of Hong Kong. Its streets, its bars, its strange places, and stranger moralities. This is the world of Suzy Wong, a provocative best-selling novel, and now filmed where the story takes place, a motion picture of international interest. Starring William Holden, who stepped into the incredible life of the Orient and into the world of the bewitching Wan Chai girl, Suzy Wong. You see the girl sitting over there at the bar, the one with the red dress? 
Yes, Susie Wong. She's my best friend, most popular girl in bar. She got sex appeal. <laughs> Okay, I pose for you. Good. I'm right here. Take clothes off? No, I've never tried nudes. Good time to try. Oh, oh, you better take oh, oh, shirt oh, off, Susie. Oh, Maybe he not lying. He can't do he beat you. Poof! He say to me, Susie, I'm crazy mad about you. You do anything you want, for goodness sake. She's a very pretty girl. She virgin? Well, if you wait a minute, I'll ask. Never mind. You'll find out. Susie, what are you doing here? You told me to wait. I told you not to wait. Uh, Susie's my model, you see. Does she just wait around until the uh, mood strikes you? I'll get your pajamas. You want tops or bottoms tonight? This is the irrepressible Susie Wong, whose world will soon be yours in this exciting motion picture. A world in which she has to fight just to stay alive. He's the only man in my life I've ever wanted. And if I have to get him the way she did, I'll do it. Robert, why you not let me be your permanent girlfriend? Oh, stop it, Susie. We've been all through that. I don't mean to hurt your feelings, but I've had my share of women and all the trouble that goes with it. That's not good reason, Robert. All right, then, I can't accept your way of life. I can't have you giving me your love on the days that you're free. Sergeant, let us through. There's not a child. Who's in charge? You said that you never really experienced racism personally, you know, for being mixed and having a different background in Hollywood. But that you think that Asian American actors are not casted enough for major roles. Oh, Why do you think that is? Well, even today, I think, uh, well, that's the bottom line. You know, this is a film industry is like any business. The bottom line is the dollar. If a film makes money, that is like flower drum song. It happens to when you make money with an all Asian castle was great, you know, mm -hmm. so that helped the Asians. So it's really, I didn't, I, I wouldn't say I didn't experience uh, racism because I think we all do sometime or other because I'm Eurasian. Mm -hmm. I'm half Chinese and half English. My father was Chinese, my mother was English. Mm -hmm. And so that when I went to school. But I went to Marino Convent. Mm -hmm. It's a convent in Hong Kong, and there were a lot of Eurasians there, Portuguese, Eurasians, mix, mm -hmm. um, maybe that really, I didn't feel it as much. Uh, but when I went to school in England, yeah, you encounter it. It's like, uh, it's part of life, part of your life's journey. Speaking of which, when your father married your mom, mm. that was, society had a yes. weird look in terms of, you know, miscegenation and everything. What how did that affect you? Or how did it feel? You know, no, I was a, that? I said that actually last night because in my speech I talk about that being a Eurasian. Mm -hmm. Today, you know, you see many more mix uh, the marriages between, uh, let's say, Chinese and uh, Americans mm -hmm. than in the old days. When my father he met my he was studying in England as an architect, architecture, yeah. and he met my mother actually on a film set. He was doing the architecture on the film set, and my mother wanted to be an actress, and so that's how they met. And it was, I think it was very, very difficult time. It must have been, I mean, they got divorced when I was very young. My brother and I, you know, had my brother and I. And I think it was very difficult for a mixed couple in those days. from over there. No, I'm fine. 
I'm just fine, thank you. What's your name? Uh, where, where do you come from? My name's Lee Sue. From the lodge. Uh, Lee Sue. Stay with me. All right. Walk with me. You staying here at the lodge? Uh-huh. You've been here long? Two days. I just came in myself. I'm glad you're here. I hope that uh, we'll see each other again. I hope so, too. change, the film industry change from when you started in contrast to how it is now, especially for Asians? A lot has changed a lot. It, I came in the tail end of the studio system. I was still under contract. I was under contract to a company called Seven Arts. Ray Stark was my mentor. He's passed away. Mm -hmm. He became a big producer and did a lot of interesting films. And it's changed. Uh, uh, then the studio system went out. And I think it's better that the, today actors can control, I think, the career much more than in the old days, which was controlled by the studio. Today they can, um, we get into writing, you can write your own project, you produce your own project, you, you learn much more, you can executive produce. I find it much more interesting and I think the young people are very lucky because they have a camera and even an iPhone or whatever and they pick it up. I mean, in the old days we had a 16 or an 8 millimeter. I had an 8, I remember. <laughs> and it was much more difficult to handle than today and go out and make a film. Just shoot anything. Social media I mean, is everywhere. Absolutely. A lot of actresses speak about aging in the industry and how ruthless the industry is to actresses and how difficult it is to get certain roles or yeah. roles that are generally you know, after a certain time. How do you feel for you? I agree. I mean, but it's not only in the film industry, mm -hmm. it's everywhere. I mean, in the television, yeah. in oh, Wall Street, I don't know, whatever, you know, in any business. Age has a lot to do with it. And I think it's very difficult for an actress because they try to keep up the, the looks and everything else. And you have to be realistic. I mean, you you know, you're certain age, you play certain roles, and then as you mature, hopefully you mature mentally as well, <laughs> and have a better understanding of the business, and try to look for interesting roles. Now, for us Asians, it's very difficult for us because first, you don't get that many roles written you know, for, because this business is still predominantly white. Mm -hmm. Even though I think uh, African Americans are coming out faster, Hispanics, and hopefully the Chinese that will develop more substantial roles for the Chinese actors do you or see, Asian actors. Yeah. Do you see that changing anytime soon? Do you see? Yeah, I do. I do. I think it's better. And as more Asians settle in this country, which is, I think now is what, um, they, they're coming in fast. You know, I think it's behind Hispanics. It's like... Yeah, it's right behind. It's right up there. Yeah. So that will call for more roles, interesting roles, and maybe for more films made about Asians. After her second box office hit, Flower Drum Song, Nancy received a Golden Globe Award for Most Promising Newcomer. And pictures of her could be seen all over major magazines in the early 60s. But despite such success, Nancy recognized the limited number of parts the industry had to offer Asian actors. So she took on non-Asian and non-traditional roles, and even tried working from the other side of the camera. When she found her own production company, Nancy Kwon Films, in the 70s in Hong Kong. 
you founded your own production company and you yeah. directed, produced several commercials, yes. especially for the Eastern Asian audiences. How did that come about? Why did you feel compelled to do that? I, um, what was it? My father was very sick, so I went back to Hong Kong mm -hmm. and to be with him, and he, he passed away. And uh, I was asked to uh, get in production with this company. They were shooting a lot of commercials. So I thought, oh, maybe it's a good time to get behind the camera. So I did that. And, you know, you learn a lot being on the other side of the camera, too. So that's how really it came about. We shot a lot of commercials, learned a lot from that. And, uh, and then develop projects and things. So is well, that something you're still involved with? Yeah, I'm still yeah. I write and uh, yeah, cool. yeah. For, at the moment we have a, a lot of screenplay. We're doing the funding, <laughs> which is the most difficult part. Yeah. Getting the money for the project, especially with um, independent films today, is very difficult. Absolutely. Speaking of writing, in the '90s you wrote a book <clears throat> about your son who passed away mm -hmm. after being diagnosed with AIDS and mm -hmm. you also made a movie about his life and mm -hmm. the profits from both were donated to raising awareness to the cause and studies as well. How did it feel to get so involved with that after such pain, after going through something that I can even imagine? Maybe that thing that was uh uh, something I needed to release, to let go. I wrote this, how I felt, and from the cards and letters that people sent me, how they felt about it, because my son was a very special person, and and very much loved, and he was in the industry too. He was just starting out. We produced, Norman and I produced his first film, which he wrote and directed and starred in. Wow. Yeah, before he passed away. So, and then yeah, a few years ago they made a documentary on my life, and that included that part about my son. So, do you think you were able to help a lot of people by I hope shining so. a light on that? Yeah, I hope so. I, you know, I think losing a child is really you never recover from it. I mean, it stays in your heart forever, and and but we've all lost loved ones and. Yeah, I think anything, anything if you can talk about it and I hope it does help, I really do. Through the 80s and the 90s, Nancy could be seen mostly on independent films, while also starting to do more work for TV, guest starring in several TV shows and TV films. Her experience became really diverse, as she led stage plays, narrated many audiobooks, and worked on productions about things she's loved for a long time, such as Tai Chi. When Nancy wasn't acting, she was involved with charity and became a spokesperson for the Asian American Voters Coalition. While over the last few years, she's been getting recognition for all the work she's done in the past, it does not mean she plans to stop working anytime soon. When we did our documentary, we traveled to Cambodia. Oh, wow. So somebody said to me, why, why Cambodia, Nancy? Why do you want to do... I said, well, Cambodia is because I lost my son. That's when yeah. the segment we talked about. My son was in Cambodia because there was a genocide in Cambodia and so many people died in Cambodia and it's really the poorest country I think it's one of the poorest countries I've ever yeah. seen tell me a little but they bit have about a lot that. of soul you know yeah. it's a what it's a Buddhist country and mm -hmm. we were filming in Angkor Wat which is a wonderful interesting place you have to go yeah I would love before it to. gets too touristy you know? yeah. it happens fast too what's the documentary that you're doing you're doing that well, that's, now currently or? no no we finished you, it already finished that it? was about my life and oh, so yeah. the, the part that we talked about my son mm -hmm. I said let's go and do it in Cambodia you know it's a great location beautiful to look at but it's got a lot of history and then it has this genocide that yeah when did you film that? Uh, about three years, four, oh, maybe four years ago. Maybe. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. How was that, making a documentary about your own life, being well, a part of it? kind of weird, but, yeah. you know, but I like documentaries a lot. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I, strange, but interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about your work as a philanthropist, about I've heard about the Young American, Asian American Voters right. Association, that's something you're passionate yeah. about, so tell me a little bit well, about that. I try to encourage Asian Americans to go into mainstream politics, because they can make a difference, and, you know, and they should. 
And I think that will be able to boost up the Asian Americans in this country and help us to get, you know, it's very important that they get a voice and get heard. Why do you think that that's an area that has such little presence yeah. from Asian Americans and yeah. from other minorities? I think it's because they really haven't been introduced to it yet. Or I, I don't know. I mean, they really should, especially now is the time for it. And it's opening up very fast. The world is changing. America, this country is changing. And we're settling in. More Asians are settling in. We definitely need, need good representation. Absolutely. I've heard that you never want to retire because you think it causes trouble. How so? Well, I don't know what you mean by retire. Yeah. I think retire is, a, I don't know, it's a strange word I mean, for me. There's always something to do in this life. Mm -hmm. So as long as you're alive and you're capable, I think we should do what you want to do. When you get older, all the things that you put off uh, that you can't do, and say, you know, then you should get it done. I remember I had an uncle. He loved to play golf, and he was looking for the day that he would retire, and then he would play golf every day. Well, along the way, he got um, lung cancer, and the last few years of his life, he still playing golf. He couldn't go out. He couldn't do anything. He was in the house, and he said to me, he said, you know, why didn't I play more golf when I, when I could not play golf yeah. and, you know, waiting until you retire. So whatever you want to do, do it now. There's no such thing as retiring. Absolutely. You just have to be, you know, conscious of what you can do, what you cannot do as you get older. And we all have limita limitations and go from there. You know? So many people who wait so yeah, long and yeah. ends up being too long. Yep. What are some of the projects or some things generally could be playing golf or anything that anything you would like that, to do. that you will want to do. Yeah, yes. what are some of those things that you personally still want oh, to do? Or There are a lot of things I like to do. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I do pretty much what I want to do today. I do. And so I can't complain. And because I'm always trying to, you know, my mind, I want to keep my mind mm -hmm. so healthy. I read poetry, I, you know, to get What's a day like in your life? A day long, oh, depends, you know. Uh, Mondays I go to Tai Chi class, you know, and I take classes, then I paint, and then I write. So it's always busy. Mm -hmm. And the day is too short, actually. I study Tai Chi and mm -hmm. Qigong and martial arts. So, especially Tai Chi, I, I, I go to class and everything. And there's a philosophy behind it. It's very, it, it centers you. And I'm very much into meditation. I think it's very important because we live in a very busy world and you have to find the space and you have to find the time for yourself, you know, for your inner voice, the inner quiet. Otherwise, you go crazy, you know, you don't want to get caught up in this. And there's a rhythm here in this whole world that goes around. You, you, you just want to make sure that you get centered sometimes and go into your space. And I, that helps me a lot. What are some projects that you, I should, that we should know about that you plan or you know really in the future like, will be involved in? I really don't like to talk about projects yeah. that I'm working on because mm -hmm. I always kind of superstitious, yes. you know. But I did finish a screenplay mm -hmm. and to be shot in San Francisco, you know the it's about Asian Americans actually. And so we're doing funding, and as I said, it's yeah. very difficult. And also there's a project I have um, that the Chinese are reading. And I, it's a kind of a, uh, it's a folklore. It's a Chinese folklore. Mm -hmm. And let's hope it goes, you know, I don't know. It's very difficult. Let's see what happens.